Greetings from Black Sheep Knitting in downtown Needham, Massachusetts. Um, good to see you today. I wanted to first show you um, my progress on my beautiful Flicker and Flame hat. Um, I'm doing it in a sport weight cashmere, the Cardiff cashmere, which you may have seen. And if you want something wonderful around your head, I recommend it, but there are other yarns. And the, of course, beautiful um, spin cycle dyed in the wool. So that's my progress so far. It's lots of fun to do. I'm enjoying it. I wanted to um, give you some tips and tricks or tips on how to become a better knitter. We all strive to improve our knitting all the time. So I jotted down some things um, that I think will be helpful. One um, thing that I recommend always is to use good quality yarn. You're not gonna make a beautiful thing if you use you know, the yarn that belonged to Aunt Tilly 50 years ago. Necessary. Well, it might be beautiful, but it may not be. Um, those yarns are very good to dredge up and look at and maybe you should just donate them. Uh, so I would always find a good quality yarn. There are inexpensive yarns out there that are, are good quality. You can always ask our advice. Um, so you, we offer lots of free advice. So you can always come in with something with a pattern and yarn. You don't have to have bought it here, but we're happy to advise you on the right yarn. So that brings up, um, you need to know the right yarn for your garment or the, whatever it is you're making. Um, a linen is not a good, a good yarn to use for a winter sweater, for instance. Uh, if you want a good warm winter sweater, you want wool. The wool keeps you warm. Uh, cotton and acrylic, not so much. One big thing that we pound into everybody's head is gauge. And gauge is important for a number of reasons. Primarily, it's um, really important if you want your garment to fit. People come in all the time and say, oh, I don't want to ever make another sweater. I made one, it didn't fit. Well, one of the reasons it might not fit is that you have the incorrect gauge. And we're happy to show you how to do a gauge, a proper gauge, and then to measure it for you. A lot of people will say to us, this is a gauge swatch which um, now learned that I would make a swatch even bigger, and I might do a, another video on that. This is probably not big enough to really get an accurate gauge. If you have the incorrect gauge, you're not going to get a good fit, um, and that can ruin your entire project. Another reason to do a gauge swatch, and people say they don't want to do it, literally it takes you, even if it takes you an hour to do a good gauge swatch, it's worth doing it when you consider you might put in a hundred hours on a project and find that it doesn't fit you because you didn't have the right gauge. So it's really a good idea. We're happy to check them. We're here all the time to do it. Um, one thing, um, another thing is to keep your gauge tension even throughout the project. So it, you may do a gauge swatch and then three months later you pick up the project to do it and you may find that your gauge has changed. You should always recheck your gauge, even if you did the gauge swatch yesterday and you knit and you get five inches in the pro into the project, double check your gauge because gauges can change. You can, you were in a hurry when you did your swatch, whatever, but you can come in and we can help you with that. Um, you wanna finish every row, that's another really good have it to get into. Don't stop in the middle of the row because sometimes you can pick up your project, and this may have happened to a lot of you, you can pick it up and you end up going the wrong way, or you drop stitches in between. So you should put needle stoppers on, and remember when you pick up your, your project to begin, your working yarn should be on your right hand needle. So if you're on the left, unless you're at the end of a beginning a new row, then it is on your left. Um, you always want to add new yarn at the beginning of a row because you know how those ends can get loose. You can put in a temporary knot if you want, but there are no knots in knitting. So just remember that do not tie a permanent knot. You have to weave in your ends. Another good habit to get into is knit a little bit every day, even if it's just a row. 
you can always find 10 minutes or 20 minutes um, during the day. One of the things I've been trying to do as I've gotten busier here at work is to get up just a little bit earlier and give myself a 15 minute or even an hour if I get up early enough time in the morning when I'm fresh, I've had my coffee, and I can sit down and knit. It's very hard to be a good consistent knitter if you don't knit somewhat consistently. Even if it is one or two rows a day, your tension will try to be the same, you'll remember what you're doing, you don't have to start over um, and remember what you're doing if you've done a little bit the day before. Another good thing to do is to knit with friends or get a knitting community. That if you knit with other people, they can encourage you, they can spot problems, um, they can keep you from making mis big mistakes, you can get advice, you can get encouragement. I think it's a great, great thing to do. Um, another great thing, and this is harder for uh, some than it others, is to be patient. Knitting is a little bit more of a marathon than a sprint. So don't try to sprint through your projects. It, it, I find it very hard because I always want to get on to the next thing because I'm here all the time. I look on Ravelry all the time. And so I'm always wanting to get on to the next thing. But I'm teaching, slowly teaching myself to enjoy the process of knitting and to just slow down a little bit. It'll get done. I don't think I'm gonna to die tomorrow. I think I can work through the, the, the process and enjoy what I'm doing and do a really good job. And then you're gonna be proud of your end product. Um, if something isn't right, be willing to rip it out. I ripped out whole backs of, I ripped up the whole back of a sweater jacket once, and I was so glad I did because my gauge was off. I hadn't knit for, on it for a while. I picked it up and started knitting, and then when I noticed, I got all my, almost to the end, it didn't match the front, and it didn't match the front because my gauge was much looser than it had been when I did it, was working on it before. Um, just rip it out, start over, or start, um, and you can, if you are knitting, and you're beginner knitting, knitter, learn to use a lifeline. You can Google that, or look on YouTube, but a lifeline is a, another piece of yarn that goes through all your stitches, so that when you rip back, all those stitches will be on a piece of yarn, or some people use dental floss, and you can slip them back on the needle. This is particularly helpful if you're doing any lace work or anything with yarn overs. It's very hard to rip those projects back without having to rip the whole thing. But if you've got lifelines every couple of inches, you can just rip back to that. Um, measure. Everybody should carry with them a measuring tape at all times. You need to measure. If you're making garments to fit you, you need to do measurements ahead of time. You need to look at the schematics on your pattern and measure, measure, measure. You wanna always measure your arm length because on a pattern, they give you a specific measurement, but you may have longer arms and or shorter arms. And then when you do just what they tell you, you may find that, um, oops, it doesn't fit, it's too short or it's too long. You also wanna do your own measurement from the underarm down to where you want the sweater to fall, if it's a sweater. Um, You'll want to measure if you're doing a hat, measure a hat, make sure your gauge is correct. Um, so measuring is key. Um, think about the function of your garment. So what kind of fiber does it need to have if you're making, and, and granted, I know some people are um, allergic to wool, so you do have to make other choices. But if you want to make a nice wool sweater, a warm sweater for winter, I wouldn't necessarily pick a cotton. Um, and that, you make those kinds of considerations. Um, you want to um, make all your stitches the same size. So really practice, you know, doing the same motion each time. And if you do it the same way, every stitch the same way, and with the same amount of tension, your knitting will be much easier. Um, some people recommend reading all the information on a pattern. I don't think I would go through it line by line, but make sure that you read all the information in the beginning, read all of the index or abbreviations that they have in the pattern, read every little bit of information. As I said, you don't have to read line by line, but read everything they've written down for you, because they've written, down, written it down for a reason. 
read the end, look at how the pieces are put together, if it's a sweater. Um, look at all of that stuff. As I said, <coughs> kind of a waste of time to read every single line because what will happen to you is you will think, you'll start thinking about how is that done and then think, I don't understand how that's done. Well, wait till you get to it and try to do it. And always try to do it before you come running to the store because you might figure it out on your own. Um, but do read everything they've written down for you. Um, look for descriptions of different stitches or procedures. Look for those and read through them and make sure you know them. Um, keep all of your yarn tags or the ba ball bands from your yarn. I can't tell you how many people come to the shop and um, want us to remember what yarn they knit with or want us to identify a yarn. We can't always do that. Um, and our computer system only goes back to this, for purchases of people who gave us their name, um, only goes back through this past November. So we don't have records of things you bought a year ago. So hang on to those. Also, it's not a bad idea to get yourself a little plastic sleeve for your pattern. Put all the ball bands in there and a sample of the yarn and keep it in a notebook because you may want to go back to it or you may have really loved that yarn and so you want to remember what it was. Um, do some practicing of knitting without looking. That's kind of a nice um, thing to get to, to do because you can talk with friends or you can watch a little TV. Um, practice it. I, we had a gentleman here who is a knitting teacher, Bruce Weinstein, and he was teaching people to knit faster. And so the first thing he did was made everybody put on a blindfold and they had to knit. And um, you really can do it. I do a lot of knitting without looking. You can't do complicated things. Um, take your knitting with you wherever you go. Take a little, have a little bag with whatever you're doing because who knows when you're gonna get stuck at the car dealer for two hours and you don't wanna watch the crummy TV they have on, at, the, at least at my car dealer, they have on something I don't wanna watch. You can bring a book, obviously, but you could bring your knitting and you can get a little bit of knitting done while you're waiting. Um, be sure to block your garments. Um, that said, acrylic doesn't block very well, but all other fibers block pretty well. And you'll find that in almost all of them, um, if you wash them in the sink, cold water, or some people, I do it in my machine on Delicate Cycle, Everything we sell here in the shop is washable. Everything can be washed. I won't say that I would throw absolutely everything in the washer on Delicate Cycle, but wool does not want to be dry cleaned. Don't send it to the dry cleaners. Doesn't want the chemicals on it. Remember that these, the wool that comes from animals and even the cotton comes from a plant that's outside. Animals are outside, they get wet. And you'll find that the fibers 99% of the time nicer after you've washed and blocked it. Um, and just remember, you're gonna make mistakes. It's good to make a mistake because you learn from those mistakes. And I was listening to someone talk the other day and they said, you've got to make mistakes. You've got to make these mistakes because you have to know how to fix them and that makes you a better knitter. So those are my tips that I came up with. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. Remember, we're here. Um, and we're happy to help you. And also remember to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The more that you subscribe and like us and whatever they ask you to do, the more our YouTubes and our website and our shop gets known. Um, and that helps us a great deal. It helps us to stay open um, and to provide as much as we can for you. So have a wonderful day and happy Memorial Day weekend. Thanks.